we've been talking about the TSNE algorithm, and now it's time to look at a little bit of code. All right, I'm back into the same notebook that we've been working in. I have restored the state to where we have our Swiss roll data set. And so let's build a TSNE model here. And this particular one, it is all uppercase. This particular class does accept lots of different parameters. I'm only going to use uh, a few. We've already talked about perplexity. So let's start on the, uh, the small end of that. And otherwise, I'm going to use just all the default parameters. The TSNE class, it is also one of those that does not provide an independent transform function. We only have the fit transform uh, function, so I'm, so I'm using it uh, here. I need an equal sign. There we go. And we're in the process of learning, and that finished off pretty quickly. So let's look at the Let's look at the set of points that we uh, embedded for this data set. So there we go. So one thing to notice about this particular uh, embedding is that we have uh, at least some amount of topology here. We've got all the red points scattered out uh, over here, and those sort of give way to orange, yellow, cyan, and ultimately blue. What's interesting is that the blue points kind of split into uh, this left-hand side and this right-hand side. The other thing to notice is that the distribution of the points in this embedded space are very clumpy, and, and that's because we've used very small neighborhoods. So let's start playing with that perplexity parameter in order to bring that, uh, to, to improve uh, the clumpiness of our distribution. So I'm going to double that to 10. And that's probably going to take a little bit longer to execute. That was not too bad. So with, with the 10, uh, we actually have a little bit more convincing uh, distribution as far as the color goes. What's also nice is that there is sort of an acknowledgment of both dimensions of our original manifold, so the, the color encoding one and then the other one being in the width. Um, however, we still have a lot of points that are very uh, clumped up together. So let's double perplexity again. See if that changes anything. All right, here we're starting to address the clumpiness a bit. There's still some fairly uh, large areas, like there's this big gap in here and a big gap in here. And, and again, this is what this particular algorithm wants to achieve is more um, one zero dimensional manifolds where we have uh, clusters. So we're not going to be able to completely escape from this. So I'm doubling perplexity one more time. And here our distribution now, now is uh, a bit more convincing. We still have the, the gap right there, uh, but uh, other than that, we don't have huge gaps. There, there are a variety of tiny gaps, but uh, the distribution is a lot more uh, convincing. Okay, so that's our Swiss roll data set. Let's go back to our arrow data set now. So here's our arrow. I'll execute that. And now, now we're back to this uh, particular data set. And the question is, how well is it going to do with this switch from one dimensional manifold to two dimensional manifold? And we'll go back, let's go back to a complexity of, a uh, perplexity of five.
And there we go. That's a very interesting uh, distribution. Uh, we've sort of lost the the global distribution from the perspective of colors. So it's interesting that we've got red here and orange, and then uh, and and then a bit of orange sitting out over here, and then yellow sitting back over here. So so clearly this algorithm has really split up the the, the space of points pretty dramatically. And and in our original distribution, the red were they were actually those points were actually connected very well to the orange. So it's a bit of a surprise to have them split up in this way. Um, likewise, the the blue has a bit of an odd uh, distribution to it, although kind of have the the far end, the the point of our uh, arrowhead sort of is sitting out over here, and and then this is getting closer to uh, to that one dimensional manifold. Um, which is really this set of points and these points in here. Okay, so let's let's uh, push perplexity up by a factor of two, and this should help uh, with the, that very substantial clustering that we're seeing there. That's very interesting. So so now the the red piece, which is our feather of our arrow, uh, actually has a reasonable representation in space right here. And then this piece here, that is our 1D, at least part of our 1D uh, manifold. The, there are other parts here and, and here, uh, and here as well. Um, and then, and then the, uh, the head of the arrow uh, is sort of split into two pieces. That, that's a very bizarre uh, distribution. But it is actually a little bit more convincing than the last. Let's double our perplexity again. All right. so. So we actually have a bit more convincing distribution. There's some gaps, but most of, it's mostly here. So there's our our feather, and uh, and then the the shaft of the arrow is is this bit here, uh, and then this is the the head of the arrow over here. And and what's nice is now with the 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 red here and the cyan right in here, we're actually acknowledging that two-dimensional nature of those manifolds. All right, one more time. Let's double that perplexity. And the hope here is that we can end up with one uh, connected representation. And, and we've achieved something closer to that now. So there's our, uh, the, the feather of our arrow is right there, and it, it acknowledges the two dimensions of the manifold. And then there's the the, the 1D manifold there, and here is the, the arrowhead itself. And this gap here is happening because, uh, again, uh, the points right along here in the original distribution are pretty spread out quite a, a lot more than the, the rest of the uh, distribution. So, so it's not properly identifying the fact that those are uh, right near each other. It's also interesting that it is coming to a point, but it is taking its time to get to that point. I'm just out of curiosity. Let's go up one bit more up to a perplexity of 60, see what happens with that. And actually, if you were to re-execute this multiple times, even with the same perplexity, you'll end up with uh, different answers because it is doing uh, somewhat of a random search. All right, so that really didn't change things uh, all that much. Uh, things are a bit better connected there, but uh, otherwise they're, they're the same. All right, so that's our exploration of the TSNE uh, algorithm and how it works with at least these very simple uh, data sets. And this is something to, to be playing with as, as you get into uh, larger data sets, and in particular as you're trying to visualize the data themselves and uh, also your results. This is a good way to try to capture your results in some low dimensional way so, so that you as a human can use your own visual processing capabilities to understand what's happening.